currently, I have 43 books. I had no idea that I had this many, but here we are. Obviously, I don't need all of these. I don't read all of these. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this collection down. Got my tea, got my comfy sweater. It's time to get decluttering. My camera battery died. Take two. This first book here I have never read, but it has immense sentimental value to me. Um, my grandfather gave this to me because he actually helped the author with research for it. Well, my grandfather used to be part of the U.S. Coast Guard, and he was like really way big up into that. And so he helped him with basically tide charts of the Seattle area. So in addition to having my grandfather being thanked in here and it being set in the Seattle area, it has immense sentimental attachment for me. Um, he gave it to me before he died and I never had a chance to give it back to him. So I'm keeping this. This Let's Cook Japanese Food is one of many cookbooks that I own. And I freaking love Japanese food, but I haven't used this because it's been in a box in storage. But I think I'm going to keep it because Japanese food is one of the cuisines that I really, really enjoy. And I probably will get my use out of this if I have it open and I'm able to read from it so I can adjust my shopping. So I'm keeping this one. I'm also going to keep this Between Pacific Tides book. This was given to me by my uncle. I actually have a really big passion for marine biology and the little critters that live in tide pools and everything. And this basically is that. It's quite old. It predates me by a couple of decades, actually but I really like it because it's a really interesting read and it has pictures of all these little critters that I've experienced as a child. So I'm keeping this one. I bought this book, The Daily Face, when I was still living in Oregon. There was this shop there that was a local one and I was like, oh, this looks like it'd be fun. But this is basically just everything I already know. There's no real reason for me to keep it around. So I am going to get rid of it. So this is one of many self-help books that I have. My mom gave me this because she wants me to help myself and I want to help myself, but I haven't read it yet. And I have like one and a half years to read this because that's when I hit 25. And yeah, so I, I'm going to keep this one and I'm going to put it on my bedside table so I know to read it. This is another book given to me by my mother. This is Where'd You Go, Bernadette, also set in the Seattle area. She said it's really good. I really do want to read this, so I'll be keeping it. I only have one of the Harry Potter books from the actual core line. I don't know why. I don't know what happened to the rest of them, but this is the original one. And it is battered to shit, but I love it, and I'm going to keep reading it until it literally falls apart. I have the life-changing magic of tidying up, which seems to be a pretty big staple in most minimalists' arsenals. Um, I've already read it, however, I like to look back on this and reference it when I'm feeling a little bit not motivated, so I'm keeping that. I have another fiction book here. This is a Phantom Tollbooth. I read this a lot when I was a kid, and it was read to me quite a lot. Um, you know, I think I'm going to read it one more time and I'm going to say goodbye to it because it really did mean a lot to me. So I'm going to keep this one for now. Man, this is not going well, is it? I've only got rid of one for real. I am keeping this one, Essential Judaism. It's basically my reference book um, because I'm in the process of conversion. Yay! So I need to keep this and study up and learn my shit. I have another cookbook here. This is the Cook This Not That for 300 calorie meals. I don't really need it. I am going to get rid of it. This here is another self-help book given to me by my mother. However, I tried reading this one and I hated it. It made me feel so anxious and just uh, so on edge. So this one is going goodbye. That thing was awful. This I am keeping. This is Grace Bowman, A Shape of My Own. I struggled with an eating disorder in my late teens and this really did help me through it and I still have intrusive thoughts so having something like this around is really helpful for me because it actually gives me a little bit of hope with overcoming things so I'm keeping that one. I am also going to be keeping Winter Girls, kind of the same deal. I bought this like a long time ago. <laughs> 
Elle Fowler was one of the first YouTubers that I started watching um, and I wanted to support her by buying her book. I've gotten that far in it. I need to finish reading it and I'll let you know it's really not that great but I feel awful not reading books all the way through that don't give me a reason other than the fact that the writing's terrible. So I'm going to read this, I'm gonna finish it, and then I'm going to donate it. I am also in the middle of reading this one. This is Schindler's List. I'm only two here. So this one needs to stay on my bedside table so I can finish it. I actually read this all in one day when I was traveling by plane. I really like it, not as much as the original Harry Potter stuff. It reads a little bit like well-written fan fiction, which is essentially what it is but I still like it. It made me cry a few times. I'm gonna keep it. I have a whole bunch of like these homemade craft books. I don't really need them. If I wanna learn how to make something, I will go online. If I wanna be inspired, I will look through Pinterest. This has a whole bunch of interesting things though that just go beyond trinkets. So somebody will enjoy this, I just don't need it. Same thing with Home Cheap Home. I really enjoyed this when I had it because it gave me a look uh, at other people's way of decorating and how they store things, but I already know what my choice of decor and aesthetic is, so I do, I no longer need this. And my camera's dying again. Let me charge it up one more time, folks. Take three! This is the book from Dermalogica. I was in esthetician school, and Dermalogica was the brand that we used at that school. Normally, I'd get rid of something like this. However, it does have useful information about certain ingredients and whatever. It's really good reference. And since I still need to take my state boards, this might be important to keep a hold of. Also some more beauty school stuff, cosmetology fundamentals. This is the study guide. <sighs> need to keep a hold of this. Salon Fundamentals Aesthetic Study Guide. I still need to use that. Um, I have another Marie Kondo book. This is Spark Joy. It's the Illustrated Masterclass. And I really like this. I kind of use both of the um, KonMari books in conjunction with each other. So keeping that one. This cookbook is from the school that my mom went to for massage therapy and other stuff like that. It actually has some really interesting and nice different recipes in here. I'm trying to eat more healthily, a more plant-based diet, but I'm not going fully vegan because cheese is fucking good and I love in and out So I'm gonna keep this for now. If I don't end up using it, I'll probably just bring it back to my mom. Um, here is a New Farm vegetarian cookbook and this has gotta be from like the 70s. This one specifically was printed in 1991 but this is like full of 70s vegetarian stuff, which means that it is vegan. Um, I don't necessarily like anything that I've made from here, so I am going to get rid of it. This is taking a lot for me to get rid of because this goes back to a very emotional part of my life with the whole eating disorder thing. And um, normally I annotate a lot of books like you saw with this one with you know, little sticky notes and everything, and I went through and I got rid of all the sticky notes and seeing the pages that I had annotated and what I had written in them was, it was difficult um, reading basically what I thought of myself at that point. And it needs to go, It it's like, I don't want to get rid of it, but at the same time, I need to get rid of it. My brain is so screwed up over this thing, but it needs to go. So it's going, it's going, it's gone, it's gone. I'm not gonna pick it up again, it's gone. This book, on the other hand, makes me really happy. I love this. This is a little book of skincare and it's all about Korean skincare and I love it. I have definitely adopted a more Korean um, approach to my skincare, which means that it is very far from being minimalistic, but I love it and uh, skincare is my very favorite form of self-care. So this is staying, I adore it. I love all of the cute little illustrations that are in here. I just love everything about it, so this is staying. I am also going to be keeping this book. This is from uh, Brighton Bush, which I believe is a hot spring in either Washington or Oregon. It's from Oregon, but um, every time that I've been there, the food that they had was amazing, so 
I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna make a few recipes out of it and it's gonna be a good time. I have this Bobbi Brown Beauty Worlds book and I basically really don't need this. I, I pretty much know everything that's in here already and it's more aimed towards you know the teenagers and young adults and yes I'm technically still a young adult but it's it's a little too teen tween for me so I think I'm going to get rid of it. Um, I also have a gluten-free baking book which I don't think I've actually opened yet. It was a gift from one of my dear friends. Ooh, shit. Some of this stuff looks really good. Ooh. Gluten really doesn't bother me as much as I thought it did. But I am intrigued by this. I think I shall give it a shot. Okay, so we are down to our last stack over here. Let's see if I can get this pulled over without it all toppling all over the place. I, I did it! Yay! Let's see, this book here is Anxiety, Phobias, and Panic, a step-by-step -step program to regaining control of your life. I'm pretty sure that I pilfered this from my mom's personal collection. Sorry, mom, I steal a lot of your books. Surprise. Um, I don't really remember reading this, but I think I shall keep it just to read through it, see if it does any help, and if it doesn't, I will let it go or give it back to my mom. Again, sorry mom. Uh, this is another self-help book. This is The Worry Cure. This was actually recommended to me by my favorite psychiatrist who I no longer see because I live in a different state than they do. Um, I've read through it I think once but I need to read through it again because I've completely forgotten what this is all about. So keeping that one. Let's see, I have the Vegetarian Mother's Cookbook. It's just literally a big block of text. It has some good stuff in here, but it doesn't bring me any joy, so I'm going to be getting rid of that. Um, let's see, I have Forrest Gump, which is drastically different than the actual movie itself. I got about halfway through this, but I didn't like dog ear it or put a thing in it. So I think I'm going to read it and then get rid of it, because it's fun and it's whimsical, but it's not, you know, something that's life-changing for me. I am going to be keeping this natural beauty book. I've always loved the idea of creating your own cosmetics and this is like a little bit way out there in terms of it but probably not so much to the minimalist audience. So I think I'm gonna tinker around with this and I think that it'd be really fun one day to have my own like Etsy store full of natural beauty products. So I'm gonna keep this. I adore this book. It is hefty, but it is so good, and it has bits of illustration in here, which is just amazing. This was another Christmas present from my grandfather, and I adore this series. And it's really funny because I totally didn't connect this Clive Barker with Clive Barker that does horror movies. <laughs> it's the same guy, but you know, I started watching older horror movies because I was like, oh, okay, I need to face my fear on this. And I really like some of the older stuff and some of Clive Barker's stuff were my favorite films. So it's really funny that I like him in the young adult universe and I also like him in the horror universe. But I love this. It's one of my favorite books. I have to keep it. Uh, another book reference thing that I need to keep. And another one here. Salon Fundamentals Aesthetics textbook. Let's see, I picked this up not all that long ago. It's The Cool Factor and it's a guide to achieving effortless style. And you know, it was really fun to go through this and look through it and see all the pretty pictures and everything. Um, it was a very, very quick read because it's more of like um, an editorial thing without, you know, all the ads. And I really did like it. I think I'm going to retain it for now because I still think there's stuff that I can glean from this but I'm not like totally attached to it, you know? This book is going by, again, marks a very dark period of my history. All the ingredients in here are fucking awful for you. Don't do this. No. I'm also going to get rid of The Ultimate Vegetarian. I just don't find that anything in here is really all that interesting. The book is way too large. It needs to go. Um, this big ass book of crafts, like I, I looked through this the other day and literally nothing in here speaks to my aesthetic. So I am going to be getting rid of that. And lastly, we have this feng shui home thing from back in the 90s when it was like a really big thing. And I don't know, it just seems like more work than what I would prefer. It works for some people, doesn't necessarily work for me because I like being able to move around my stuff with 
without having to regard the flow of energy or whatever. So, yep, this is going goodbye. So these are all of the books that I am getting rid of. There are 13 here, which is a little disappointing considering that I started out with 43. So now I have 30 books that are still in my possession. So I could have done better, but I'm, I'm still getting used to having to get rid of books because books to me are important. They're treasure trove of knowledge. And to discard them so willy-nilly kind of goes against my programming because I think that you should like show them proper respect, which is why I am going to be reading and discarding some of the books that I am keeping. So this is a little bit more hard than me than I anticipated, but we did get rid of 13. Out of the 30 that I'm keeping, I'm keeping these eight kind of out of necessity. These are books that I need to use, not necessarily because I enjoy them, but because they have a place in my life. So it's pretty much just all of the books from cosmetology school. I really need to, you know, brush up on myself because I've actually been out of school for quite a while. And then some self-help books that I need to basically, you know, continue functioning or achieve a higher standard of functioning in my life. So these ones are here because they kind of need to be here and someday this pile is going to dwindle, but not for right now. Out of the remaining 22, these five are ones that I am going to read and discard or read and keep. And the reason that I have the Schindler's List one on here is because I am so early into it, I don't know if I truly enjoy it. So yes, these will be evaluated once I'm finished with them and hopefully this pile will shrink a little bit. And here are the remaining books that I'm keeping out of joy because I actually really like them. So out of the 17, seven of them are fiction books and then 10 of them are nonfiction, and that's self-help, reference books, and also some cookbooks. So that's, that's all of them. I just now need to figure out how I'm going to house all of these. I do not have a bookshelf right now. A lot of these were living in the garage in a box. So that is a quandary for another day. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really felt like I could have done better, but this is something that I have to work through with books and they're difficult for me to discard. Oh, it looks like that's it before my camera runs out of battery again, so I'll see you later. Bye.